Pakatar, he's played it through, and Bowen's in! It's up for grabs! Welcome to a West Ham unofficial special, Prague. One year on. From defeating Viborg and slotting away FCSB, then sliding past Silkborg and Alex were next, and yeah, you guessed it. Cypriot side Larnaca were defeated in the last 16. The quarterfinals saw us overcome Ghent over two legs, and then the famous Pablo Fornals goal to secure our spot in the final. So that left West Ham United unbeaten in the Conference League and with just one game remaining. The date was destiny and that was in Prague. Three hundred and sixty five days ago, West Ham United reached for paradise, claiming a monumental victory to secure a trophy, a European trophy. Beating Fiorentina and proving all those doubters wrong, West Ham gained a special moment in the limelight and boy, it had been a long time coming. Albeit a thorny night in Prague, the Hammers had to dig deep uh, and found a way, courtesy of our hero from Hereford, Jared Bowen, who slotted the ball into the back of the net uh, in front of 5,000 finely poised West Ham fans who released their breath of anticipation and exploded into a joy, uh, a sea of realisation that West Ham United were European champions. I thought it would be a really nice moment for me to illustrate my journey throughout the 7th of June 2023, the highs and lows of emotions uh, and the roller coaster uh, that gave West Ham uh, that Conference League uh, trophy. So look, I woke up seven o'clock uh, on the day of the final. Now, I actually had two GCSE exams on the day of the final, the only uh, day I had two exams throughout the whole of the six week exam timetable. You literally uh, couldn't write it. Uh, it was typical, to be honest, but actually I now view it as a blessing in disguise. It gave me something to focus on. It gave me something to take my mind off the evident nerves that were jangling uh, inside me in the anticipation building ahead uh, of the finals. We really entered uncharted territory. I had history exam in the morning and a maths exam in the afternoon, and I managed to put the final to the back of my head and remained fixated uh, on the exams and thankfully they went well uh, and I, I departed school about three o'clock and then it hit me right here we go this is it the final let's do this West Ham and from that moment on nerves intensified I'm not going to deny that but throughout the day and when I was thinking about it my reoccurring sort of sentence and moment and feeling was we can do this. This is our time. Uh, I felt this was it. And I was like, it's our time uh, to rewrite history. It's our time to engrave ourselves uh, in the history of West Ham United Football Club. And we did uh, just that. I got home and nerves built. Uh, I did my pre-match build-up show, an extended one because of the occasion. Uh, I went live on air two hours before kickoff. Gary joins me. And just before we came on air, I actually, uh, I can actually recollect this vividly. Uh, Gary joins. We were having a chat backstage before we went on air. And his first sentence, um, he said to me, was an expletive. I'm nervous. I could I could tell from his body language, Gary, if you're watching, uh, I, could, I could tell. And it sort of epitomised everybody we were just so nervous but there was also that element of this is our moment as well uh, that went alongside that the inevitable nerves continued as kickoff approached I went downstairs perched myself nervously on the sofa um, as BT Sport built up uh, to kick off handed over to uh, Adam Summerton was it and Robbie Savage on commentary and I just kept nodding my head going we can do this this uh, is our moment. The game was scrappy. It was thorny. It was lacking quality, as most modern finals do uh, nowadays, unfortunately. The game itself is just a blur in my memory. I can't actually remember too much that happened. I can I can recollect the, the moment that uh, we were throwing objects on the pitch, and I hoped that that didn't uh, sort of transcend and escalate into anything further. And I hoped it didn't then affect the players on the pitch and their performance, and thankfully it didn't. It really had a final nervousness feel uh, about it from both sides in that first half. Uh, that's one thing I can remember, and both sides were 
um, reluctant to really go and find and have that knockout blow, understandably, in the first half of a final. Half time came and went. I spent the majority of it just scrolling through Twitter, trying to gauge the um, the views and thoughts of the fan base that pretty much aligned with mine. Um, nerves remained uh, and we were still in it at that point, which was the key thing. And I sort of identified to myself that the 10 or 15 minute period after the halftime break was really symbolic. It was really significant. We had to make inroads uh, and inroads we did out of a moment of nothing, frankly. West Ham players led by Jared Blood. Jared Bowen exploded into protest in the direction of the referee pleading for a penalty on the hour mark. I wasn't convinced until I saw the replay and all my faith in VAR was restored for two minutes uh, at least. A certain stonewall penalty and then the inevitable wait then from the penalty being given to the penalty being taken. It felt like hours. I was like, I just kept shouting at the TV, just take it, just take it. Knowing full well that me shouting and my outbursts were helping in no way, shape or form. But I just had to vent that. Uh, and then Sai Bin Rama stepped up. Um, my my head was buried in my hands like this. I could barely watch. Uh, and he lifted it. I can remember I was like, just play it along the floor, get it in the corner. He lifted it. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be... I thought, I thought he was going to sky it. But no, it rippled that top corner. Uh, and West Ham fans went crazy behind that goal. West Ham led the final uh, by a goal to nil. And I was like, oh... Uh, and I let out all my emotions. I had like 14 hours worth of emotions and exams and everything bottled up. It just exploded. Um, and I was just overwhelmed with joy and happiness. We got that one goal lead. I managed to recompose myself. I calmed myself down. And within a couple of minutes, uh, we were back on level terms. And, and that didn't affect me too much, if I'm honest, because I hadn't quite got my head around us leading at that point. And then the lead was gone. It was cancelled out. So um, I didn't quite get to the reality of West Ham leading the game in my head, if that makes sense. So when the equaliser came, I was like, right, come on, regroup. We can do this. And the pivotal part was not then conceding again, not then conceding a barrage of possession and letting Fiorentina get on top. Uh, and to be honest, I can't remember anything that happened in that last 25 minutes. It, I can, it was just scrappy, edgy. Um, very few chances uh, as it progressed and it just felt like extra time was um, inevitable. It was looming. But of course, um, it wasn't. You know, we had to um, get ourselves into a position where, I mean, <laughs> conceding late would have been um, an absolute travesty, you know, and luckily we didn't. It seemed the natural outcome on balance for the game to progress to extra time. But this was a final and a script was written and a script had to be followed. With seemingly no time left to muster, Lucas Paqueta picks up the ball in midfield and threads an intricately weighted ball through to Gerard Bowen. And you know what? You know what happened next. Roll the clip. Had the potential always this to be a long night. Paqueta, oh, he's played it through, and Bowen's in! It's up for grabs now! Yeah! He's done it! David Moyes is on the pitch! West Ham have won it! European glory is theirs! Surely Moyes' mission is accomplished! The weight, the major silverware, must be over now! What a moment! Just joyous scenes, just joyous scenes. I actually didn't massively celebrate the goal initially due to the offside fear uh, that was looming over us. And just out of maybe, maybe it was more like I couldn't believe it. I, I honestly couldn't believe uh, what was happening. And when the goal was given, I just... <sighs> I was I was baffled of what to do with myself. I was like walking around the front room, like, what, what should I do? We're, we we've done it. We've done it. We're actually going to do it. Um, and look, until that fateful full time whistle was blown, um, it was just nerves. I had no nails left. I was just like, hold on, West Ham. Whatever you do, just hold on. Last ditch defending. Uh, we had to protect that one goal lead that we'd re-established. That we worked so hard towards. The script was written. The final was done. We just had to hold on and hold on. Uh, we did. The full-time whistle went. The pitch was filled with claret and blue heroes, or white and orange heroes uh, is probably the term I should use. Emotion evident. Fans fabulously fulfilled with joy. And I can actually remember coming on and doing my instant match reaction 
and I was lost for words. I kept repeating myself, we've done it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe it. I just didn't know what to say. An instant match reaction is supposed to be full of emotion and that what and that's what it was. And Terry joins me. Uh he was in the chat and comes on the away days with us. He he, he joined me and he was emotional. He was in tears and that epitomized everything about it. We were overwhelmed for days, for days. I couldn't get my head around it. I simply could not believe what I was witnessing. An uncharacteristically successful night for a football club that has been dragged through the ringer. From nearly being bankrupt under the Icelandics, from leaving our home, from the unsavoury scenes of continued protest uh, regarding the uh, running of our club, to European champions champions of Europe, winners, champions, unbeaten champions. These are words and phrases not typically associated with West Ham, more like Man City, Manchester United of a previous generation, Arsenal, but not West Ham. How dare they? Uh, And with West Ham slapped all over the front and back pages of all the newspapers the morning after I woke up, I just had an immense feeling of pride. I lobbed the West Ham shirt on and couldn't stop smiling because of it. And I didn't go into school on the Friday uh, because I didn't have an exam, so I didn't bother. And just sat just watching the video on repeat. You know, uh, the goal, the bow and goal, just watching it time after time after time, just completely overwhelmed and not baffled, but just joyed. And yeah, just I couldn't believe it. Um, I actually couldn't believe it. Then we had the bus parade. West Ham fans and players swearing live on the BBC. That added amusement to it. Uh, And the pride and just everything about it. The wild celebrations as thousands of West Ham fans flocked to the streets of East London to welcome home our heroes. Also bearing in mind there was over 10,000 West Ham fans still in Prague because they did the bus parade the night after. So imagine if everybody would have been back in the country how many people um, would have, you know, filled the streets of East London uh, that night. It just, yeah, it capped it off superbly. The players went to Four Nows's wedding the day after uh, and it was just poetry, complete and utter poetry. The whole week could only be described as surreal and even a year on, I can't stop smiling. I can't stop discussing it. And even now, a part of me still can't quite believe that I've in my lifetime seen my football club lift a European trophy. I've been on this, um, you know, I've been on this earth for a very short amount of time. There's people 40, 50 that haven't seen West Ham uh, secure silverware, that haven't seen West Ham succeed uh, in a trophy um, based competition in their whole lifetime. I feel so lucky to have experienced this so early on in my life and I hope I see it again. Uh, But if I don't, I now I can clutch hold and I can have Prague. I can have it. But let me end with this. This is off the cuff. This isn't um, pre-planned. This is just what's going to come out now. You've got the big six clubs in this uh, in this league uh, and they dominate. There's no doubt about that. They are favourited uh, if you're uh, aligned to that view uh, and they gain most of the headlines. But when you see a club like West Ham come along and prove everybody wrong and really just 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 do it, just do it and succeed. It just makes it that oh so more special. Uh, And this moment now, I still struggle to talk about it because I'm still lost for words. And when I sat down ready to film this one year anniversary, uh, I thought I'd be more, um, you know, I thought I'd have so much to say, but I've struggled again. I've struggled my way uh, to find the words to describe that night. It's still really raw. And my timeline today on Twitter is just flooded just absolutely flooded with all the emotions, the the videos, the pictures, the memories. And that's what many West Ham fans will take to the grave with them. If, the, if this is the last trophy that some West Ham fans see in their lifetime, it's special. It's just so special because of the prolonged period of time between our last trophy. This is the first trophy many West Ham fans have seen in that stadium and sat at home uh, as well. Just everything about it. It was it was written by a script. Now, I'm a firm believer um, if somebody writes a script for football games like that and it was followed. Boy, was it followed and uh, and just unbelievable, just absolutely unbelievable. The importance and significance to the football club um, goes without saying this. Uh, Just, yeah, (laughs) a moment that still makes my jaw hurt because I'm smiling so much now uh, because of the because of the joy, seeing all the players celebrate 
the whole honeymoon period for three or four days afterwards where players didn't sleep. They were just out drinking and partying and, and having the time of their lives. Uh, and that's what we want to see at West Ham. We're a fantastic football club. Um, we are, in my eyes, uh, one of the biggest barring the big six uh, in this country, we should be seeing success. I'm not saying every season, but this football club should see success sporadically more than we have in recent times. And I've got to mention David Moyes, of course, who's now departed the club that brought and architected uh, the whole sort of European um, success and glory and journey uh, on us. So I can't uh, do a Prague tribute without mentioning him. I can't do a Prague tribute without mentioning all of the players and all of the backroom staff and everybody involved the fans for the fantastic role uh, that they've played over the years you know dropping down to the championship continually following the team uh, and it all is worth it when something like that happened a year ago today all of those miles that you put in getting home uh, at 1am on a Monday morning then going to work on the next day all the away days the long you know the long journeys and flights and all the all the sacrifices that that fans take to go to West Ham and to support West Ham and all the money we spend, it just all becomes worth it in a moment like that. Uh, it's indescribable. And that's why I find it so difficult to to discuss and um, and sort of articulate and, and um, provide my thoughts on this because it all makes it worth it, everything. Uh, and it's just something that we can live with forever and we can look back with, with beyond fond memories. Uh, nobody can take that away from us. People can diminish the competition. Uh, people can say it wasn't all this, the Papa John's Cup and all that, but you don't understand what that meant to West Ham fans unless you're one of us Mark Noble understands it loads of West or every West Ham fan understands it it's the philosophy uh, and it's the importance of every now and then a club like us that is uh, mid-table a club like us that is uh, average every now and then gaining the success, reaching for paradise, as I said um, at the start. And it makes it all so sweeter when it's not a regular occurrence. When it happens, not very often, um, it makes that moment and those days just incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, and look, that's it. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. This is my Prague one year on um, tribute. I hope this video to be a little bit more eloquent than it has been. But it's just raw. It's my thoughts. It's my emotions. Uh, and I'm actually quite emotional sitting here reminiscing on the two days or the three sort of day period of everything about it because it was special. Words, adjectives don't cover it. You can't find words that um, that sort of present how important and how just amazing it was for West Ham United. It's over and out from me. My final thought is it's been a joy this season to sing Champions of Europe. You know, uh, we know what we are. It's been a joy. And I've got to say a huge thank you to everybody uh, that made this happen and has made me live my dream, made me see West Ham lift a trophy and, and made me sing Champions of Europe. We know what we are from me. Come on, you irons. And wow, what a special night in Prague. Champions of Europe. We know what we are.